you can see there is quite a lot of rust as well. About 10 or 20 percent of the entire structure uh, has, of the individual letters, has rusted away. So these two problems really need to be addressed very seriously. And we want to use, as I mentioned to you, the 25th anniversary of Expo 88 next year as a catalyst to uh, restore the letters to their former glory, both in terms of their colour and in terms of their structure, make sure they have structural integrity as well. Uh, not just for the 25th anniversary year, but for the next uh, 25 years. And I think um, that they're more sculptures than anything else. And when they got Ken Doan involved um, to create the Australia feel for the Australia Pavilion, it was very important um, that uh, all the colours and the Ken Doan feeling come through it. So we treated it as art, not as a sign. Mm. And in those days, the technology wasn't available, so they were literally handmade. They were, the, uh, the, the, the drawings were put on the steel plate. They were cut by gas axes, or gas torches, rather than computerised cutting. But the uniqueness of it all was how we had to get the colours right and how much trouble Ken Doan, uh, or how much trouble Ken Doan gave us to get the colours right as we are painting it. And we've actually got a photo of you. To buy pictures, I, I want them to be optimistic and I want people to get joy out of them. And I fell into a cow paddock and the signs have been sitting there ever since. And luckily for us, they have stood the test of time quite well considering they are in the cow paddock. They weren't of special metal. Uh, and they are just crying out to be um, rescued and put back on display. They are sculptors, uh, sculptures. Um, the special paint had to be made for it, special design. Um, I have actually tried to get Ken Dane engaged in saving them, and uh, like a couple of the uh, post-expo well, you know, expo people, they don't really want anything to do with it. The life's moved on, um, and I haven't been able to get any engagement out of uh, Ken at all, and we're just, you know, just unfortunate but I can fully understand it. You're trying to find... All I can do is just do the best I can. The criticism that I've copped in Australia, I've never copped that overseas, of course not. But look, uh, I'm not complaining. What about... Much for coming in. Thank you. And if anyone has any thoughts on where to put this whopping big set of letters that spells Australia that probably just needs a little bit of a touch-up but essentially yes. iconic. Anyone who looks at it just goes, we remember that from Expo. I've got people to move and I've got people to paint. You just need somewhere to point exactly. it. Right. Okay, what's the name of the Facebook page? Uh, Foundation Expo 88. Thanks for coming in this morning. Thank you very Happy much. Happy 25th. Thanks for the cake. You brought a cake. I can't believe I you brought a cake. Thank um, you. The, the producers thanks. are all out there probably finishing it off. There won't be any left by quarter to eight, but I'll, uh, I'll go and pinch a piece back from them. Peter, thank you so much. Good thank to see you again. You. It's the highest hill between Brisbane and Toowoomba. It is a fantastic so sight. I've been to Hollywood many times. I know this sign's bigger, but it's further in the distance, and uh, this one at least requires investigation. Oh, I think so. Good morning. I'll do a pan, and uh, uh, thank you again. Thanks, Peter, and thanks to Spencer as well. The big Australia sign from Expo 88. It's been at Chartsbury College, but seems to be no longer loved or wanted. What are you able to offer? Well, we've got about 200 acres uh, on the highest hill between Brisbane and Toowoomba and we're prepared to um, subject to a number of things. So, uh, to give the land, to put the sign on, which you could see probably from the highway at the uh, HP. Which is the problem, because cows are indiscriminate. I mean, they don't look at the word Australia <laughs> and think, you know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't deface this. They just spray it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it, they really did suffer and it's and it's the urine and the feces okay. that have just done the damage okay peter we're, we're getting the picture it's now you've, you've painted it very well yeah thanks for that i've been a doubt or two at one stage uh, i'm sorry you proved me wrong that's for sure i, I well it's a little bit of a point a gentleman uh, one of our members the other day came up and uh, spoke to me and he said congratulations I didn't think out of hope and hell. And he's one of our <laughs> society members. Sorry, John Mills. Uh, I won't pop you in it. But no, look, uh, we went down to the wire. The weather didn't help, but we've made it, so I'm very happy. Greg, who actually bought the signs and donated them to you? To my pictures, I, I want them to be optimistic and I want people to get joy out of them. And I make the less figurative letters pop and then. On the letter U, we have a clear appropriation of Aboriginal visual languages associated primarily with the central and western deserts. Dots, cross-hatching, rendered in a kind of iconic ochreous colours of white, red and brown. 
This appropriation can be seen as a clear attempt to distinguish Australia from other sunny, beachy countries. The EU may operate as a way of kind of acknowledging Aboriginal people's presence, but more than this, it clearly connects Aboriginal Australia's uniqueness with Aboriginal peoples and their cultures. The times I'm hung, I think that they are people of great clear vision and understanding and taste and style. When I'm not hung, I think they're a bunch of dickheads that wouldn't know a good painting if it fell off the wall and hit them on the head. That's just, that's just life, you know, that's life. But if you're a painter, you have to accept that you put your work up and people like it or not. Mm -hmm.